If you've been contemplating quitting your 9 to 5 but struggle with actually finally making the decision whether it's time to quit or not, this video is for you. Hello and welcome, in case you're new here, my name is Hannah and I quit my full-time corporate job almost two years ago now to be my own boss. And in this video, I wanna share what helped me to actually make the decision as well as what I've learned since then and what I wish I kept in mind before actually quitting. The video is gonna be divided into two parts for two kinds of people. The first type of people are the ones who have a very big need for safety or security and have probably been thinking about quitting for years now but still have not done so. And then there are the types of people like me who tend to just go with their gut and who maybe saw someone on TikTok or YouTube or Instagram talking about how they quit their job three months ago and are now living their dream life with lots of money and not a lot of work so they think I can do that too, I'm gonna quit tomorrow. And part one of this video is for the people type A, aka the safety seekers, and part two is for the I go with my gut kind of people. And if you find yourself somewhere in the middle, you might wanna watch both parts. Okay, so part one, safety seekers. So I'm guessing that you are in a situation right now where you have a job, which is kind of fine. It's paying your bills, maybe even a bit more than that. Maybe you can even go on a nice vacation once or twice or maybe three times a year. You can get your nails done. You can go to a fancy gym. You can have dinner with your friends regularly. So you're thinking you have a lot to lose if you quit that secure job with your secure paycheck, but not only the money, then there's also the structure. You have a job that tells you how to spend your day and that tells you what you need to do in order to be successful, AKA be promoted. Plus there's the status. Maybe you have a fancy title, maybe you work at a fancy company or at least an okay company so that when someone you just met asks you, what do you do for a living? You can say, I'm a marketing manager for Google or whatever it is that you think it's cool or whatever your title and your company is. And or at the very least, you have a job aka you're employed, aka your parents do not annoy you with saying you need to get a job. But let me burst your safety bubble here a little bit because you're never really safe in a sense, especially if you work in the US, but also in most countries, I think, if you're not in Germany, companies can just fire you just because your boss does not like the way you scratch your head or something like that. But even if you have a nice company that's not gonna fire you, you still are most likely not earning as much money to save up enough money to be able to afford not only the nice things in your life, but also the urgent things. For example, let's say you burn out at some point in time or you have another mental health issue that kind of urges you to stop working for a while, you couldn't afford that because you're just getting a paycheck. Even if that paycheck is an okay paycheck, but you'll always be kind of tied to your job in order to afford the basic things let alone to afford the really good things or the really expensive things, which often is connected to health. And then the status thing can be good, but only if you actually believe yourself that your status is good, aka if you actually think that your job, the job that you're doing does provide value to someone and that is actually something that you can be proud of. So as you can probably tell, I do not think that you should see an employee, a nine to five corporate full-time job as secure ever. That should, in my opinion, especially if you live in the US, not be the reason to stay. Not if it's the only reason. But I do wanna say that there is some truth to the security-ishness of being employed. Because first, you do know that every month the certain paycheck is gonna come in, at least until you maybe get fired. Second, if you do quit your job and you work on your own business or travel or whatever, you're not in that structure of the company anymore, which first can be a bit lonely sometimes and second be, can be challenging, especially for the type of people who struggle with disciplining themselves because you now have to tell yourself what you do all day long. And especially, you have to tell yourself what means success to you. And that again is very important in order to not feel like a failure, no matter what the metrics say. And the metrics being, you know, sales or money coming in or people being interested in you, however you want to define it. But the most obvious advantage of having a nine to five job is that it does pay for the roof over your head and your food on the table. And this helps incredibly, or it can, help incredibly to at least maintain a certain level of sanity compared to not being employed. Which brings me to the type B type of people, the 
the let's just quit type of people who are perhaps not really in love with their job. They don't like their Sunday evenings because they only can think about the Monday mornings where they have to go to that job that just sucks out and every energy out of them and you're grumpy during the week and only can look forward to the weekend only to then be depressed on Sunday evening again because you have to waste all your precious lifetime on that job you really do not like and that really does not bring any value to the world or yourself. And of course the Insta or YouTube algorithm knows this and keeps showing you channels of people who quit their job and are now very successful and happy that they finally quit their job. So you're thinking they did it? Seems easy. I can do it too. I should quit next week. Okay, maybe you're not that quick because apparently you are informing yourself about whether you should actually quit or not, which I think it's very good because as you can see in some of my older videos, quitting your job too early can really screw up things more than necessary. Because first, if you do not have a good backup plan money-wise, you're going to be anxious a lot because you just don't know how you're going to pay your rent or your food, let alone doing fun things and just living life. And let me tell you that this can really mess up your mental health. Plus, it's really easy to feel like a failure if you quit your job without already having something built and you have to start from zero because it takes time to build a business. It takes time to be successful. Yes, it can happen, not overnight, but it can happen fast. But for most people, it does not happen fast. And then it is so easy to feel like a failure because first, money-wise, you are a failure because you know, you're not making money or not much money. And second, you don't have any feedback because you're the boss now. You have to feedback yourself, which can be pretty challenging in the beginning. So as you might guess, I am suggesting you to not make the decision too quickly, but also not too slowly. But instead, what I recommend, what I learned from my recent past is you should be prepared, but not overly prepared because you will never feel 100% ready probably to quit your job. It's kind of like the people say you will never be 100% ready to be a parent. I think it's kind of similar when it comes to quitting your job and being an entrepreneur or a solopreneur or whatever it is that you want to do. But you do want to be prepared at least to some extent because you want to stay sane and not burn out because it is so easy to burn yourself out when you're your own boss. Yes, this does not only happen to you if you have a shitty boss in your company who just keeps on shitting work on your desk. You can also burn yourself out pretty easily. And I think a great way to find the goal in the middle between never ever making the decision and making the decision too quickly is what I did, which is to get a part-time job, part-time, that is 100% remote, that is also kind of cool, aka that you don't hate doing, aka that doesn't suck out more energy or out of you than is necessary. And then you can use the rest of your week. For example, if you have a 20 hour job like me, you can use the remaining 20 hours or more than that to work on your own stuff. And in my opinion, I think the absolute latest time to quit, because even if you do the part time thing, you can also just stay in that situation, which is fine if you're happy in it. But if you're not, I think personally that the absolute latest time to quit should be when the income of your side business or your business or whatever you're doing next to your employed job, if that income is more than the one you get from your job or at least the full-time equivalent of that job. My motto in general is go with your gut. But I think when it comes to this, sometimes if you're a type of person like me who tends to make very quick decisions, it can help to think things through a little bit more than you might want to. And if you want some inspiration on how a day in the life of a part-time solopreneur can look like, have a look at my workday blog right here. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I am sure you will make the right decision and I'll see you in my next video.